Welcome to another Horror Review Sunday. This week we will be discussing the newly restored, digitally restored, Shivers from Vestron. This was on Amazon for like $11.99, which is crazy because usually when these movies get digitally restored, like Shout Factory or Arrow or even Vestron, they're usually over $20, bucks, sometimes over $25. Bucks. Like this is a 2020 release and it's 12 bucks on Amazon, so that's a steal. Quick plot synopsis, this movie tells the story about an apartment building being overrun by people infected with this parasite that was created to help people with medical issues like bad kidneys and whatnot. So it's a medical experiment gone wrong type of movie. And everybody gets infected with this parasite that makes them start throwing up blood. Some people, and then some people just get overly sexual and they just want to fuck and make out with anybody so it's a very crazy porno like horror movie very sexual very erotic at times and very bizarre so let's get into the things that i like about this movie this is a very low budget film so taking that into consideration i thought that the effects in this movie regarding the shivers if that's what they're called they never say the word shiver in the movie so i'm not sure where the title came from this movie had different titles at when it first came out, like they come from within, something like that. So I'm not sure where the title Shivers came from. It's not like people are shivering in here, I don't know. But the effects of these shivers are pretty good, like especially like with the stomachs and when they're moving and bulging out, like throats that start to like move, like you can kind of tell it's a fake neck, but it's still good for low budget filmmaking. And this was a low budget so I thought they were able to pull off some pretty cool stuff in here. And I like that this movie just goes for it in that third act. It just keeps trying to build the insanity throughout the film. Like, it's a little bit of a slower pace in the beginning, but it's just the story just keeps getting crazier and crazier. It just keeps building the tension, building the insanity over time. It just has a good flow. Like, it just gets crazier and crazier. Like, the the, the dial slowly being turned throughout the whole runtime and it just gets wacky at the end like this movie overall made me think of a couple of movies that it reminds me very much of and this came out way after night of the creeps like the things in that movie look very similar ish to these shivers in this movie and it also plays out like a, zo a zombie movie towards the end with the big crowds of you know, infected people and they start like banging on the glass. It's very much like a zombie movie at times. And it also kind of reminded me of Critters 3 because of the location. That movie's all about an apartment building being overrun by critters. So it kind of made me think of that movie too. And it also made me think of a movie that just came out within the last year called Snatchers, where these people get infected by this parasite as well, but I think it attaches itself to your head. And it makes them very sexual and horny, you know. Like So it, that reminded me of this movie as well. So it's, this movie kind of influenced other films. And even Alien, like the stomach, the parasite will bust out of the stomach and attach itself to people's faces and try to get in their mouth. Very much like Alien. So this came out, this came out before that. There's lots of nudity to be expected with a plot like this. Parasites that make you horny. There's lots of girls that take off their tops, girls kissing. It's very sexual, and it goes for it. Like, there's little girls that start kissing older men, and then fathers kissing their own daughters. It goes for it. It doesn't apologize. It just absolutely goes for it, and I always appreciate that. A movie that doesn't care what you think. It's going to be bizarre, and it ain't going to try to dial it back. Now, as for the little things that I did not care for in this movie, there is some poor acting for sure especially when they're supposed to be terrified and panicking and it's just very very poor at times there's no one that really gives an outstanding performance in this movie and another thing is the characters overall there's so many characters that the movie doesn't focus on any of them for that long you don't really get to know anybody in this movie there's no one that i was really like rooting for like i really hope this person makes it and there's there's not anyone I can root for, and there's not really anyone I hate or want to see die, except for maybe the guy, Nick, who's, like, cheating on his wife. Like, I feel bad for the wife in this movie because she's trying so hard to get her husband to seek help, 
She's just such a loving, caring woman that it just kind of irks me that Nick won't listen, like won't just hear her out. And he's like, you find out he's cheating on her. So yeah, he's a piece of shit character. But none of these characters are like really fleshed out. It's not about any of them. It's just about the craziness and, you know, the the metaphor of the movie really. Therefore, it just kind of suffers. Like there's no characters that I really cared about or knew. So she's like, nah, I don't care who makes it out of this. And I like to have at least one character in my horror movie that I can relate to, connect with, or want to see make it out. And there wasn't really that for me in this movie. And there's really no consistency with this parasite. Like Nick, the asshole cheating on his wife, he's like one of the first infected and it takes forever for him to start getting sexual and trying to like rape his own wife. But everybody else in the movie, as soon as they're infected, they're like trying to attack the next person they see. Some of them are actively seeking out others to infect them, while others that are infected are just staying at home, not wanting to go out and spread it. So there's really no consistency with how this thing works. Some of them can talk, and then some of them can't talk. Like this girl at the beginning who's being attacked and she's not making a single noise. And then this guy can talk and like lure victims to the office where there's like an orgy going on. Besides all that, I mean, I could nitpick and say there's not really any good atmosphere in the movie. Like, it's just not really trying to build atmosphere. There's no like horror atmosphere in here, but that's a little nitpick. And so yeah, that's really about it. So final thoughts, I think this movie overall is enjoyable i enjoyed it i wasn't really bored too much the beginning drug slightly i thought it had some good things in it for sure some funny moments i chuckled quite a bit at the absurdity of what's going on it takes itself very serious but i don't think that hurts the film at all i like its bizarre nature i like some of the effects in here the blood's very bright red it's like an italian horror flick the blood the way it looks how thick it is um there's no real gore or anything, but it's a very small budget and it's kind of got that small budget feel, but still kind of ambitious with it. So when it comes to Shivers, this is a Cronenberg classic that I think is worth seeking out if you like these types of movies. So go out and buy it. All right, now let's go into the spoiler discussion. So this movie opens up like with this really bad like ad for this hotel or not hotel like apartment and just like the guy who's talking it's like he doesn't sell me on this apartment being amazing and they have like their own doctor's office for some reason is that a thing do are there apartment buildings out there that have like their own like doctor's office like on the first floor and shit they got like their own restaurant no so it cuts to this girl immediately being attacked. Like the door gets kicked open. This girl's getting strangled and none of them are making noises and there's no music either. Like this is when most movies would have like intense uh, score playing over it, but it's just silent. And they're both like very silent as they're like running around the room. It's very quiet. And then he like cuts her open surgically with a scalpel, starts pouring like this acidy stuff on her, like, trying to burn the parasite inside of her. And then once he kills her, he like slits his own throat because I guess he doesn't want to live with what he's done. He realizes that he's released this horrible thing and he's responsible. He's going to go to prison. He's like, nope, ain't having it. Slits his own throat. And then we see that Nick is a fucking cheat. He's like, I'm going to work, honey. But he goes upstairs to go bang this girl who just got killed. And that explains why he's already infected. He's poking at his stomach. He sees things moving. So he's been cheating on his wife, and now he's paying the price. There's another message in the movie. You shouldn't cheat on your wife, or you'll you'll get this horrible STD where a parasite will eat your insides. And he goes to, like, puke. He's getting sick. He's puking in the, the bathtub, and then he pukes over the balcony, and the parasite, like, lands on this woman's umbrella. <laughs> it's just a little funny scene. It's like... What an asshole. Like, he saw them down there. There's no way he didn't. He saw those two old women walking by. He's like, oh, I'll just puke on them. What? See, he's just a dick. He deserves to die. So, and then they throw, like, a shiver. The shiver goes into the laundry room, and then we get... A, here's another Critters 3 moment. Just like in that movie, we got a laundry room attacked. This heavy set woman gets attacked by the shiver. It hits her face. And then later on, she 
attacks this like waiter who's delivering food and she's like i'm hungry for love <laughs> hungry for love and then there's these two bratty kids trying to do like ding dong ditching except they like open the slots on the door where i guess mail you know, where mail goes in they open up the slots and they start like yelling into everybody's room trying to wake them up little bitches like these little brats deserve to get infected but we don't get to see that happen at all like they go up to one of the slots there's a shiver thing right there it doesn't jump at their face like it did everybody else so there's another like inconsistency those kids should have gotten infected then we get the bathtub scene this beautiful woman uh she's been in all kinds of horror movies before this barbara Steele. she gets the shiver up her you know what it's like a nightmare on elm street movie uh, moment you know with the glove you know or even in slither like i haven't seen that movie in so long but that movie's kind of like this too the similar looking thing slither with uh michael rooker yeah the, even the poster of that movie is a bathtub right with all the so, yeah, is that movie a remake of this? Now that I think about it, I haven't seen that movie in so long. I remember there was, like, this huge woman towards the end, like, a barn, and she, like, explodes. Is that sounding right? Because, like I said, I haven't seen that movie in so long. The one guy gets split open, and, like, opens it. Yeah. So that movie must have been, like, a remake of this. I, I'm going to look that up afterwards. <laughs> yeah. So, but, yeah, Barbara Steele, I like how she's hearing a news report about two people like mutilated upstairs in that apartment building and she's like not even phased by it doesn't even blink she's like whatever like most people would be like oh my god what what happened at my apartment building like she's like i don't care but yeah she gets infected and she just stays in her apartment she doesn't like leave and try to infect other people like all these other ones she just stays at her apartment and then this poor woman who's married to this piece of shit comes by later on and then she starts, like, trying to kiss her. We see, like, the shiver bulging out of both of their throats. Like, it goes from one mouth to the other. Even though when it, when they were kissing, it looked like both their mouths were, like, closed shut. They weren't, like, open mouth kissing or anything. Which is just, it's a little nitpick, but whatever. And then this nurse, who's very sexual before she even gets infected, tries to bang the doctor, St. Luke, and... She's like, kiss me, kiss me. And then she's taking off her top right in front of him. I'm assuming they've been banging for a while, but he's too distracted, so he's not really showing her much attention or affection. And I, I like that because she's trying to get a kiss from him before she's infected, and then by the, and she can't get that kiss. And at the end of the movie, that's how it ends, really. Like, she finally, when she's infected, kisses him in the pool. And it's like, finally, I got my kiss that I wanted earlier that you wouldn't give me. So I guess that was kind of poetic. But she's an idiot. Like, when she gets attacked first by this random guy, um, she has, like, this food fork, this big old fork, and she won't stab him at first. Like, it takes over 30 seconds being attacked before she's like, oh, that's right, I have a weapon in my hand. Maybe I should use it. And she finally stabs him. But that scene was just so frustrating for me in the moment. I was like, are you going to stab him? Why do you have a fork if you're not going to use it? <laughs> then finally she does use it. Then this old couple gets infected and the thing's going up like the cane. <laughs> they're like an old French couple and their acting is pretty poor. And I think they maybe were dubbed because some of the movie felt kind of dubbed. Maybe it wasn't. And, and then so he goes to the garbage room in the basement to find out where the shiver is. And he this uh, random black guy starts attacking him. And this is when like... The blood's very bright red when he gets his ass beat down. And they cut the phone line so they can't call the police. And then the guy, the piece of shit, Nick, he starts trying to rape his wife. And she just won't leave at first, but then finally she does. And then there's like a random slow-mo shot out of nowhere. It was just very random, like this chick turning around. Uh, there's some odd shot selections in here and odd moments like that. Like, what was that for? Like... There's a moment in the movie where there's like a 20 second like POV shot. It felt like a found footage movie of the nurse like running down the stairs, running around the parking garage. Like, why is this all POV? It just felt kind of out of place and random. And then we get this cool car stunt and there's no airbags because it's like 1975. I guess there wasn't airbags back then because neither car 
passenger or driver's seat had an airbag that went off. And then the owner of this apartment building, the manager there, he lures these people to this back room. And there's like this orgy going on in there. They're like all making out. <laughs> they just start getting attacked. And it was just funny because of the face on the guy who lured them in there. He's got like this big old shit eating grin on his face as he's like unbuttoning his shirt. It just made me laugh. Just his grin. Then like the doctor, he goes into this one room and there's this old guy with his young daughter. He's like, this is my girl. Have you, don't, don't you want to meet my daughter? Like, she's so pretty. You should like bang my daughter. And he starts making out with his own daughter. It's just, oh, so disturbing and disgusting. And so then finally this doctor who's been at this like university making phone calls throughout the movie, giving like exposition about the parasite, what it is and what happened. He finally gets to the building and as soon as he gets there, he gets attacked by the parasites on Nick. They're like all on his face. He starts like trying to peel them off but then Nick comes to stop that and starts spitting more in his mouth. And then the nurse, she's giving this speech about how everything's sexual. She's just going on and on and on about how everything in life is sexual. Existing is sexual. Dying is sexual. And then you see the shiver start to come out of her mouth revealing that she's infected which that speech alone was a clue like Okay, clearly she's out of her mind. She's infected. And I like that he just sucker punches her right in the face when he sees the thing coming out of her mouth. Like, no, shut up. And then he, like, tapes her mouth shut. St. Luke goes upstairs, shoots Nick. Bye-bye, Nick. Thank God he's dead. Because he's a bitch. And then... So then the movie, like, turns into a zombie flick. Like, he goes to the pool, sees the two girls that were kissing earlier in there, see their boobs through their shirt. <laughs> then he goes outside, and, like, over the hill, the zombies, you know, quote unquote zombies they're like coming over the hill kind of looks like something out of like night of the living dead or night of the creeps just it feels very much like a zombie movie like they go up to the glass or start like banging on it they open it up they throw him in the pool he finally gets that kiss from the nurse and then they all start leaving the garage in their cars they're driving out to go to the next apartment building to spread this sexual parasite disease to everybody the whole town's going to be filled with sexual assault and rape. And that's the ending. It's very grim that they just all leave and everybody's going to get infected. And even little kids get infected in this movie. Like I said, it goes for it. Everybody's a victim. So, yep, that's the end of the movie. So the clap reward for best scene in this flick is the bathtub scene with Barbara Steele getting the parasite up her you-know-what. And the Funny Bone Award for funniest moment to me is when he pukes on the, the the parasite onto the girls, the old couple below. That moment really made me laugh. And when he, when St. Luke sucker punches the nurse towards the end. Like I said, this movie gave me a, quite a few chuckles. Um, there is no best kill or worst kill. Everybody's not really dead. They're just taken over by parasites. So there's no one... Oh, what, well, the one guy did get shot and killed. And the one guy slit his throat. But I don't know. That's just lame stuff this movie's not about kills or anything so yeah i don't have a favorite character but i do have a least favorite character mr pinky war for least favorite character is nick he's an asshole cheating on his lovely wife he deserved all those parasites in his stomach there you go there's my thoughts on shivers really enjoyed it what did you think about shivers what your thoughts of it in the comments below and as always if you like what you see you can hit this like button and become a subscriber today just by clicking on my cartoon face in about five seconds and until next time i'll feed yourself